If you ever had a wipe storage disk and wondered, am I actually deleting all the data that was located on that disk, or am I just overriding specific portions of it? Well, if it's the latter, then this could lead to someone trying to recover that data and actually doing it successfully. Most of us go through this process whenever we're trying to get rid of a storage disk that we no longer need or use, but want to make sure we don't supply any data with it that can be recovered. Well, Linux has a tool for that, and it's available to all. Let's learn how to use it, but before we do, let me tell you a quick story after you smash that like button. Years ago, I decided to see if I could recover data on a disk. I went through the process of reformatting my disk and so-called deleting the data that was on it, and afterwards, I figured why not use some data recovery tools to see how well I actually deleted the data that was on that disk and to see what was left behind on the disk. Basically, I filled the data with images and text files to see what could be recovered. And to my amazement, I found that most of the files were recoverable, including images that were left. Although the images weren't perfect because some of the pixels had been overwritten during the erasing process, a decent chunk of the images still existed. Wow. So that got me thinking, how could I confidently remove all data from a disk and make sure it's not recoverable? Now let's talk about a tool that can help you do this, which is included in most Linux distributions. First off, to gain access to a tool, pick your favorite Linux distribution and get a USB so you can boot into the live environment of it. So I'm just choosing Ubuntu today since I have that handy. And the reason to use a live environment is to be able to access read and write permissions of any disk that you have plugged into your computer. Otherwise, if you're loading into something that already exists on that disk, you won't be able to access the disk and these commands won't work. So I'm going to bring up a terminal and so can you so that we can run through this command process together. I'm going to be demonstrating this on a file so we can visually see what's happening as we use this command. What I'll be using it on is this wonderful Tux mascot logo. We can see how wonderful the image looks right now, but let's say we're ready to get rid of it from our disk. How do we do this and what's the result? So the command that we're going to be talking about today is suitably called shred. Shred is a tool that comes with most Linux distributions and allows you to overwrite everything with zeros to hide the shredding that you did. So let's demonstrate this first. In order to use shred, you're going to have to have super privileges. So you're going to type in sudo first, then space shred. And after that, there are various different switches that you can use. Let's talk about those briefly. And if you're enjoying following along, think about subscribing below so you can get more Linux programming and engineering content. Let's talk about some of the switches here. Really the ones I'm interested in are force. That way we can change permissions to allow writing if necessary. We'll force the write dash N, which signifies the amount of iterations that we want to run through and randomize the data that we have on a file or storage disk. So it says overwrite N times instead of the default three. So that's an important number. Three is the amount of times by default if you don't specify an iteration on how many times it randomizes the data. Dash V, verbose, just to show progress, because it might take a while, especially if you're doing many, many iterations of overwrites. And last but not least, using the dash Z or zero command, which is a final override that puts zeros to hide any type of shredding. Fantastic. I'll make sure to put a link in the description below to this manual page in order for you to look through the rest of the switches, but let's go use it in practice. Back to the terminal. I wanna mess with this image here. So what I'm gonna do is use shred just to overwrite the data. So I'm gonna use the default and I can do that by just specifying the file. So on the desktop, we have tux flat located here, the mascot, and I'm just gonna run shred on it once. We can see that the preview kind of went away in the background. And what that essentially did is it ran the shred command on the image with the default three times of overwriting data. So let's look at the PNG and notice now fatal error reading PNG image, not a PNG file. So basically it's already destroyed the file and it's unrecognizable by the system already. So now you see what that does to an image, but what does it do to a file? Let's create a new file and just put some text in it. I'm gonna say, hi, Savvy Nick was here. And let's see what happens to this file. If I save and exit, I'm gonna save it right here as text file. So we have it here, text file. Let's run shred on it as well. So shred, and this time I'm only gonna shred it one time so I can use the dash N and then a one to specify I will only want to overwrite the data one time. And I'm gonna say, the file that I want to overwrite. After I run that shred, I'm gonna open up text file in nano again. Let's see what exists now. Look at that, a whole bunch of gibberish. You can see how shred has randomized the data and completely shredded what used to be there. Fantastic. So now if you wanna simply shred data, you know how, including on files 
images, what have you, any file will work. But what's even better is when you can do this with a storage disk. So for example here, if I list the contents of dev, I should see something called SDA for my example. So you'll want to figure out which letter the disk that you're trying to erase belongs to because you could have multiple disks in your system and you wouldn't want to delete the wrong one. For example here, I have a disk SDA that exists and I know I have a Linux distribution installed on that. I want to completely get rid of the disk and override it. Well, how can I do this? Well, I can do it with shred. And you'll notice we have SDA, SDA2, SDA1. These two are partitions of this main disk called SDA. I want the main disk, so I have SDA. Yours may look different. Yours might say NVMe or some other format, depending on the type of disk that you have. SD is kind of representing older technology, such as SSDs or hard disks. So you'll want to make sure you're, again, properly selecting the proper disk. You might have SD. A, B, C, so on and so forth. So we can say SDX, where X represents the letter of the disk that you want to erase. Regardless of that, let's clear things out and run a different command on that text file that we have. You notice there was gibberish in there before, but let me change that gibberish into something else. So I'm going to do sudo shred, and then I'm gonna do dash V, verbose, tell me the progress, F for force, that way any write permissions get propagated on, Z, to zero out everything after it's been shredded or randomized. And then I'm gonna specify the file or disk, which text file here is what I want to delete. And now notice what happens. It goes through one, two, three passes, and then writes out zeros. So now let's confirm that's actually what happened in the text file. So you might be asking, what in the world is this right here? Well, this actually represents a null character in this specific text editor, meaning we've nulled out or zeroed out the entirety of this file. All you see are null characters. Fantastic, and now you can visualize what happens to your storage disk if you use shred. Now it's as easy as using shred on the particular storage disk that you would like shredded. So I'm going to do it now. So if I do sudo shred, and then I do the dash V F Z, and I specify dev, and I'm going to specify the entire disk. I know mine's SDA. I've confirmed that. I've actually checked it by checking the size, unplugging it. I wouldn't wanna delete the wrong one. And if we're going to become super users, we need to understand that running these types of commands in an incorrect manner can lead to devastating effects like deleting a storage disk that you didn't want to delete. After making sure that I'm deleting the proper one, I'm going to press enter. It's going to take a little while because I have 160 gigabytes that are being randomized at this point. And depending on your storage disk, it can take a little bit of time to actually write out to that disk and randomize everything on that disk. That's what, again, Shred does. So we'll come back to this in a moment, but I want to talk about in what cases Shred is not effective because that's important to understand too. So back on the manual pages, here's a fairly important section to understand, and it's a word of caution. Note that Shred relies on a very important assumption that the file system overwrites data in place. This is a traditional way of doing things, but many modern file systems do not satisfy this assumption. The following are examples of file systems on which shred is not effective, or at least not guaranteed to be effective. So we have a log structured or journaled file systems, such as supplied with AIX and or Solaris, and it gives you the file systems here. File systems that write redundant data and carry on even if some write fails, such as RAID-based file systems. So if you have backups of your file system or storage disk, of course, only the ones specified get deleted. File systems that make snapshots, such as network appliance NFS server. Again, if you can make a snapshot and you can recover your data, well, if you haven't deleted all your data, you're still gonna have it. File systems that cache in temporary locations, such as NFS version three clients. And finally, compressed file systems. So you can read more about this, but in most cases, Shred works great and it's a utility and tool offered by Linux right out of the box. So you don't have to go searching for some fancy tool that requires you to put your email in or even purchase in order to successfully shred and get rid of data. And once things are finished, you'll see the pass 404 if you're using the default iterations and zeros written out to all 160 gigabytes. So now I'm going to confirm that my hard drive is completely destroyed by trying to load up that system and see if shred successfully worked on wiping out and deleting all my data that was located on the disk. And as you can tell, the recovery process has started to take place because nothing exists on the storage disk and I've been entered into the UEFI rescue shell to try to rescue my system. That's because everything was wiped on that storage disk. Well, now you understand how to use a powerful tool in Linux 
in order to wipe out your storage disks. Take a second, like the video if you enjoyed the content. Make sure to subscribe below, hit that notification bell for more Linux and programming videos, and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.